when we do acid-base titrations, what we can do is we can graph that information because you know if you've got a chemical in a bottom flask and you can actually record the pH of it and then you start pouring in another chemical, an acid or a base, into an acid or a base, you're going to get a pH change that progressively occurs. And you know you can actually find that equivalence point in a titration by graphing these titrations and you end up with things that have really smooth look to them and they're called titration curves. So, let's take the, 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 the most standard type of titration curve that we have, a titration involving a strong acid and a strong base. Now, here is the, uh, the statement, HCl is titrated by NaOH and that means that the HCl is in the bottom flask and is titrated by the NaOH, is titrated with the NaOH or uh, NaOH is titrated into HCl. It's another way of saying this sentence right here. So what's happening is we're getting the pH of a, of a chemical in a bottom flask that happens to be HCl, so the pH is going to start low. And as we pour NaOH in, what's going to happen? Well, characteristically, what happens when we graph the pH of the solution versus the milliliters of NaOH that we actually have pouring in from a burette into a, a, usually an Erlenmeyer flask that's been, uh, that a, a known quantity of acid has been pipetted into. The net equation here, hydronium plus hydroxide makes 2H2O, is what this is going to represent. We start with a low, and then the pH changes gradually until it does that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a nice smooth type of line, and that represents what we call the titration curve for a strong acid, strong base titration where the base is being titrated into the acid. Now, what you should be able to read off of a titration curve is this, that you get very little change occurring in pH, and that's very true, very little change in pH occurs at the very beginning of a titration because it's a logarithmic scale and there's not a lot of concentration change. If you do graph concentration of the hydronium versus milliliters NaOH added. Sure, it would be more of a straight line relationship, but logarithmically, because we're dealing with the power to which uh, that, that um, the base 10 is taken, oh wow, you don't get much of a change at all at the beginning. And so it, we get a smooth, smooth, smooth line until all of a sudden the pH changes like crazy when it approaches the point of neutralization. What would the point of neutralization be for this equation? Well, when the moles here are equal, that's neutralization and that's when the amounts are stoichiometrically equivalent and you only have water left in solution when neither of these two are in excess and that means that the pH is going to be 7 and you'll find the pH is 7 on a titration curve for a strong acid, strong base titration. Take where it breaks at the top, where it is, breaks at the bottom here, there is your steepest slope here, go to the middle, whoosh, straight across and right across from that middle, that's the pH is 7. The equivalence point is always in the middle of the greatest change. That's what you'll notice for any acid-base titration. You will notice a steep upswing and then that greatest slope, you're going to find the midpoint of that and that equal that is where the equivalence point is. Now, this solution, because if this was 0.1 mole per liter HCl, it would have started low at about a pH of 1. Here's an NaOH, if it was 0.1 moles per liter, it'd be about pH of 13, and that's where it's going to level off to when you keep adding NaOH in, in excess, into that solution. But the equivalence point is going to be there at 7. That's what that's called, equivalence point. If you're doing a titration, somebody said, I want you to find that, titrate, that, that equivalence point, and I'm not going to let you graph it, you just have to find that one point. You could use a chemical indicator to find that point. Like for instance, bromothymol blue indicator is an indicator that changes color in a range of 6.0 to 7.6 where before that bromothymol blue is yellow and after 7.6 bromothymol blue is blue. But in between here it's green. So that HBB, BB negative arrangement, that's bromothymol blue by the way, in its acid and base form. When it's mixed together in the indicator bottle, all indicators are in their acid base form mixed together. HBB is the acid form of that indicator which happens to be a yellow color. BB negative is the blue form of that indicator. Mix them together you get green. Here's the thing, take a look. If you started a titration by plink plink putting into an, indica in an indicator into this HCl, down here 
there's an indicator present that happens to be HBB because it's way down here, pH is going to, and that solution is going to be around 1, it's going to be the yellow acid form of that indicator. You've got HBB down here and it's going to be yellow. And guess what? You are going to get a titration occurring when you're pouring NaOH into HCl. Yellow, 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 yellow. And right in here, that's where that 7 is, and it's going to be green in here. But it's going to be blue up here, and it's really difficult to stop a titration just at green because this is so steep in terms of the milliliters of NaOH added. You could be adding NaOH from a burette drop by drop and swirling and watching, and it will be yellow, 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 and it'll go blue. And that's when you stop the titration. And you say, I stop that titration because I have reached the point, that end point, where I am done and I hopefully have nailed my equivalence point. Now, you might get green. Well, then if you do, congratulations, because you're a pro at titrating. But if you get blue, you might have got blue here, and it still lines up with a volume here of NaOH that you added that you might need to record to do stoichiometry later. So, the thing is, that bromothymol blue indicator would be yellow, then green, then blue, stop at green or blue, and that means that you've got the end point of the titration. This is the equivalence point. This range here is what the end point color is that you want. Equivalence point when the moles are equal or stoichiometrically equivalent. End point is when you stop a titration because a color change has occurred. Now, a lot of people on a multiple choice test will say, um, I think the end, and, and the question might be on the multiple choice, the end point is here at A, here at B, here at C, or here at D. And kids, a lot of times, will go, it's a D. It's a D because that's the end. See, that's the end. So it's the end point. No, it's not. No, it's not. The end point is where you want this color to change, and that's at the equivalence point. So the end point and the equivalence point, not totally synonymous, but kind of are. You want the end point to be at where that equivalence point is supposed to be. End point is when the color changes. Equivalence point where the moles are stoichiometrically equal, and that would be right here in that region. You want your end point to stop, to, to be right there where the equivalence point is. So that's a standard look for a strong acid, strong base titration. Now, here's the thing. But what if you were going the other way and you were titrating HCl is titrated into NaOH, and we're going the other way. Then the titration curve would look like this. You would start high and then go low, and since it's still hydronium plus hydroxide, the midpoint is going to be there, and the pH is 7 at the equivalence point. Bromothymol blue indicator, the best indicator to use to get to that equivalence point right there, and you are going to have blue, 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 green, stop, hopefully, and if it just goes blue, stop there anyway and then it goes blue all the way after that. So that's strong acid, strong base titrations with titration curves.